the risk of a wider war in the Middle East just went through the roof. It is now much higher than it was just even a couple of days ago, even more than it was yesterday, for that matter. Now, as we've been talking to on many previous deep dives, and we're going to continue to go on all the way through this, this war as it unfolds, uh, there is a risk that this could explode beyond the borders of Gaza. We've been saying that from the outset. Something happened today that you may not have even heard about yet that just cast a very ominous shadow over this. Actually, a couple of things. First of all, Benjamin Netanyahu addressed his nation and basically told them that the ground invasion is now uh, has actually already started. But he flat out laid out that the Israeli defense forces were going to go in and utterly destroy Hamas. So the carnage that's happened so far is probably nothing compared to what's about to happen. Now, that's critically important because of how it's impacting those in the region. And we're talking about many of our allies. That's why this is so dangerous and such a big, big challenge that we need to be aware of. First of all, in Egypt, the president of Egypt actually gave a warning to his military that they need to be careful and not get carried away with emotions because of their anger for Israel and not to act on it. You had the king of Jordan meet with President uh, Macron out of France and ask him to please convince uh, Netanyahu to stop the war before there is an explosion in the region. And then you had this coming up here. Now, what I'm about to show you, this is not just another regional actor. This is actually an American ally, a NATO ally in the region. And they said this. Netanyahu, nasıl teröristse, Hamas da teröristmiş. Yazıklar olsun. İsrail, biz de seni savaş suçlusu olarak dünyaya ilan edeceğiz. Ve şimdi bunun hazırlığı içindeyiz. Ya İsrail sen buralara nasıl geldin? Nasıl girdin? Sen bir işgalcisin. Sen bir örgütsün. Dolayısıyla Türk milleti bunu biliyor. Batı'dan bahsediyorum. Gazze'deki katliamında en büyük sorumlusu işte bu Batı'dır. Bır ve kararlılık. Öyle bir hasret. Ey Batı, size sesleniyorum. Böyle bir gayretin içerisindeyseniz, biliniz ki bu millet ölmedi. Bu millet dimdik ayakta. Ve yine aynı şekilde, aynı kararlılıkla Libya'da neysek, Karabağ'da neysek, Okay, did you catch that? This is President Erdogan, a NATO ally, the leader of his country, flat out saying that the West is responsible for the carnage unfolding in the Gaza Strip right now. Not Hamas, not the terrorist strike on October 7th that, that lit this whole flame here that has now resulted in, in Israel getting ready to go in. Now, as I've been saying, Israel has to be very careful that they don't go too far. So there is some warning for Israel. But it was Hamas, not the West, that started this here. And yet there is our ally in Turkey to a, a, a thronging crowd, hundreds of thousands of people. This is not just a, a minor group here. This is a major ally with a huge for a group of people that are chanting uh, things which actually uh, some other reports I saw of this interpretation, uh, translation, that he implied that he would be willing to go to Israel and attack on behalf of Hamas. You also saw him in there. He said that Hamas is not a terrorist organization. They're freedom fighters and that it's actually Israel who's the terrorist. Now, what are we to make of this? Are we to think that that's actually not a serious issue? Is that something that we don't think that we need to worry about? Because I, I look, that you already seen. This is what I think that uh, King Abdullah in Jordan is warning about here, that the region is on the verge of an explosion. He sees that. He's one of our best allies. This is not someone who's against us in the region. Egypt is also wants to be friends with the United States. They're warning about what's going on in their own country right now. 
These are things that our president needs to put his maximum diplomatic effort into. It is absolutely vital that we keep this war from exploding. And that means that we have to put pressure, not just on al-Sisi in Egypt, not just in Jordan, not even just strong arm in, in, in Turkey to the extent that we can, but he's got to also rein in the impulses of Israel. Now, I know that's not a popular thing and nobody wants to hear it, but all of these things are playing. You can't just pick one and leave it alone and try to go after the others. It's a huge issue. And it's something that, that we need to deal with all of it. Because if we don't, if we don't deal with what's happening right now, then we're going to potentially be caught up in this. As we've had on our uh, deep dive just a couple of days ago, we have America significant vulnerability with our troops on the ground in Iraq and in Syria, where many of these nefarious groups, especially this so-called axis of, of resistance, can easily get to our troops. It's a big issue for us. It, we, we have a lot at stake here. What troubles me is how our president seems to be viewing this. Now, in 60 Minutes, just a couple of weeks ago, before this explosion happened, actually, he was asked, can we su support Israel as well as the Ukraine and still be able to maintain our national security interests? And here's the way he replied to it. Are the wars in Israel and Ukraine more than the United States can take on at the no, same time? We're the United States of America, for God's sake. The most powerful nation in the history, not in the world, in the history of the world. The history of the world. We can take care of both of these and still maintain our overall international defense. Okay, the, the thing that troubles me is that Biden didn't even, didn't even hesitate. He didn't even say, hey, this is going to be a difficult situation. We have to balance a lot of needs and a lot of requirements. He just dismissed it like, hey, we're the United States, man. We can do anything we want to. And that attitude has permeated a lot in our country and is responsible for a lot of trouble that we get into. And if we keep that attitude now, as opposed to saying, man, this situation is starting to boil. And if we want to keep that cauldron from blowing up in our faces, we better start taking some action really quick. And that means we better ramp down the, the talk about war and ramp down the talk about how we're just going to provide anything everybody needs and that there's not going to be a result or consequence or that we're not going to make ourselves vulnerable. That day needs to be over. We are no longer in that situation. As I've said many times, this is not 1992. We are not the complete unipower in the world that we can literally do anything we want and no one can challenge us. That's not the case anymore. And now then you see, because of our failure to, to have good diplomacy and our, and our loss of international standing, even our allies are starting to turn against us or at least turn against our interest. You see Erdogan, I mean, it's not like he's using coded language or trying to beat around the bush. He is emphatically saying this on a national stage in front of hundreds of thousands of screaming people, and he could care less who's watching. You don't think he means what he says? We dare not find out. We dare not test that. We better start getting our, sh our ship in order and start doing the things that are necessary to bring this under control before it gets out of control. And we have no control over anything that happens if an explosion occurs. And we stand to lose a great deal. I just want to alert you that this is not a minor issue. Things are starting to escalate and they're starting to go faster and deeper and the temperature is getting hotter. And it is time for us to start changing our tune. We can't just continue to maintain this blanket, hey, we're going to support Israel no matter what without even considering the ramifications or our other friends and allies in the region. All of this matters. And it is time for us to really pay attention. We're going to keep uh, up on this, and we're going to continue to give you the information that you might not be seeing uh, elsewhere. And we're going to give you the, the implications below for your national security and for all of our uh, peace going forward. This is Dark Times, but Deep Dive is going to be here with you. Thanks. We'll see you next time.